These are the brand new Beats Studio Pro. These are the fourth generation model. Actually, I think they were originally called like the Studio Wireless. So the last one was like the Studio Wireless 3. It's been like years since they have been updated, uh, but these will still retail at $350. And in this video, we're gonna go over what's new, as well as my overall thoughts on the brand new high-end over-ear headphones that I've been using for the last week. Let's start with what's new. And the most important new feature is not really a feature because you know, you need sound from headphones, that's just a fact, uh, but the sound quality has been greatly improved, and it now features things like Apple's personalized spatial audio with built-in motion accelerometers and the gyroscopes and all of the stuff that we're used to in like the AirPods Max and AirPods Pros, uh, so that you get fun stuff like dynamic head tracking. Though I'm personally a fixed head tracking person because it's less disorienting during like everyday listening sessions, but you do get the dynamic head tracking if you want it. Uh, there's also a adaptive noise cancellation, AKA ANC, with a dedicated processor and upgraded mics for playback correction. So if you have any unwanted ANC artifacts, this should get rid of that before you even notice, which is always a plus. Then there's updated 40 millimeter drivers that Beats says delivers 80% lower distortion compared to the previous generation, which is again, the Studio 3 wireless, it had a weird name, but it was that one, which has been like seven years in the making of an update. So again, I'm really happy that Beats didn't forget about these because these were my favorite Beats over-ear headphones. And so now we have a updated version. And honestly, the sound quality has been absolutely fantastic. But, and this is a big but, it does have that warmer, bassier sound profile. I mean, they are Beats after all, and I do expect that. And so that's kind of the custom signature sound that you get from a pair of Beats headphones. They aren't as neutral sounding like a pair of AirPods Max um, or the previously mentioned AirPods Pro. Those have a little bit more bass, but they're, for the most part, pretty neutral sounding headphones. Again, you do get spatial audio, which in my opinion are right on par with AirPods Max. I, that's kind of like a nuanced thing that I'm just not honestly trained enough to notice uh, like really minor differences when it comes to spatial audio. To me, it sounds pretty much the same. It works great for when you're listening to music and of course, when you're watching TV. I also mentioned the upgraded microphones and that doesn't only just have an impact on A and C, but it also has an impact on call quality and that actively will filter out the background noise to enhance the clarity of your voice. One of the best parts about Beats and Apple's headphones in general is that you get one touch pairing that syncs across your iCloud account, you get Find My, over air updates, etc. But now you can get pretty much all of that stuff on Android phones. Uh, so you'll get Google Fast Pair, which is basically the same thing as what I mentioned before with iCloud syncing, except this will use your Gmail account. You just turn on the headphones, put it in pairing mode, and your, bring your phone next to it. And as you can see here, it automatically will say that this will sync to your Gmail account. And uh, yeah, you just one touch connect and it's done. And then you have an app that you could download that will unlock customization options. It'll have software updates, find my, whatever Android's version is, uh, Google's, find my, I don't, I don't remember the name, but it has that too. Uh, and so you get all of that in the same kind of package that you would get on iOS. You now get it on Android. When it comes to battery life, it's rated for 40 hours. I've had these headphones for a week and I have not charged them one time. So I feel like this will check out, but honestly, I think I need a little bit more time to truly give my opinion on the battery life. Uh, I don't even know how much we have left, maybe like 20%, but I have been using these quite a bit for the last week and I haven't needed to charge them at all. And so if you do need to charge them, you can get four hours of playback time for about a 10 minute charge with that fast fuel feature that's on a lot of the other headphones. And these are, um, you know, no different than a lot of the other Beats headphones that feature fast fuel. And lastly, there are a few other ways to connect these headphones. Like, uh, well, you get traditional Bluetooth, which is normal, but you can also use USB-C uh, for lossless audio, which is another new addition for the Studio Pro, Pro lineup. It supports lossless audio. Um, you can also go real old school if you want and use the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack that is still, for some reason, present on these headphones. I mean, I'm happy that it's here because a lot of people still like to use a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, especially if you're on a plane. And Apple has long ditched the uh, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, so I'm just surprised that they're on here. But hey, not complaining. 
All right, so I think I've highlighted all of the new features. It's been quite a long time since these headphones, particularly. Again, they were like the Studio Wireless name. Uh, now it's under the Beats Studio Pro. Uh, but it's been a while since they have been changed. And so the design is pretty much the same, and so is the build quality. And that can be a good or bad thing depending on your viewpoint. I personally have no problem with the design, but the build quality is still just mostly plastic. I mean, you can hear just kind of how cheap these sound. I mean, they feel pretty cheap because it is plastic, but they're not like cheap in terms of durability. I don't think they're gonna break pretty easily, but when you compare them to AirPods Max, it's no question just how much more premium those ones feel. And even other headphones in this price point, like Bose and Sony, I mean, they're just, even they use plastic, but it's just, this is pretty much all plastic. But I will say it's very lightweight because it's plastic and it fits really well on my head. I can listen to uh, music for long periods of time and they don't really hurt, unlike the AirPods Max, which are pretty heavy. So I do enjoy the fit. Um, there are no physical buttons that are visible aside from the power button, but there is a button here on the left ear cup. There's actually a couple. Um, above the B logo is volume, and then the B logo will adjust playback controls and skip forward and all of that. And of course they do fold up, if you were wondering. They do fold, uh, and that is so that you can fit them inside of this new carrying case, which, uh, you know, the last carrying case was a hard case, which I do like, but it was really big, and a lot of people didn't like that. I didn't really either, because it kind of made it hard to travel, so this is much better, but if I really need to pick on, I mean, it's just super, you have to like, in order to get these in and out, you really need to like maneuver these in here, and it, it just doesn't open that wide, but that's just a really, really, really small gripe. But overall, I do like this case. Um, you have a little pocket here for your cables, which is nice. Um, and it's very compact. So you can easily shove this in a bag and it's not going to be as uh, overbearing as that large case was in the past. And there are four color options this year. You get black, deep brown, navy, and the sandstone model, which is the one that I have been showing you in this video. So yeah, overall, I still really like these headphones. They sound amazing, they fit really well, and the look is iconic. The design is iconic, so it's just been around for quite some time. I just wish there was some more premium materials, but I also understand why maybe uh, Beats didn't want to go in that direction. Plastic is obviously cheaper, but it's also lighter, and it might be way too heavy, like a lot of people have complaints with the AirPods Max. So, you know, for $350, I just, you probably could have used some metal and some more leather here and there, but the good news is the most important thing is the sound quality and the new features are fantastic. And really the sound quality is all that matters to me in the long run. And the Beats Studio Pro do not disappoint me there. But of course, I would love to hear from you in the comments down below. How do you feel about the new Beats Studio Pro? Are you gonna pick one up? Let me know down in those comments. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you around in the next video.